Evan has a question. Our business has some unique requirements that the standard SharePoint features don't fully address. What? Yeah. <laughs> However, developing custom solutions can be resource intensive. How do businesses typically balance using out of the box features with the need for custom solutions? What factors should be considered in making that this decision? That kind of goes back to what we we're just what I just said about the other one. You really need to build something new if you can get 80% of what you need out of something that exists and maybe build the other 20. But yeah, it, it's time or money. You can move with an out-of-the-box solution or 80% and move forward, or you have to go back and gather those requirements and figure out what people need. And following up on that, how much money do you have? That. And how much time do you have? Mm. That should answer that question. And do you have the resources to do it? Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of plug and play solutions out there from third party suppliers. You know, sometimes you can find something that's really simple that will do it for you without having to build a ton of personalized content and, you know, start researching in the cost benefit of, of doing that. Yeah. What are you the sharpest to tool for the job, right? Yeah. I'd also add that, like, from the SharePoint perspective, um, make, make sure you're familiar with the roadmap because some things that people are asking for, like, as a PM in the SharePoint world, there's a lot of things people are asking for that are they're on the roadmap and they're, and they're in the pipeline, right? They're going to come. So make sure that you, you're, not, you're not spending money building custom solutions when we, we already have something that's on the way. Right. Neil, you have to, days, have to share that with us now. She no, can tell us all the, the secrets. Roadmap's Come public. on, I'll share the pub, the public roadmap. I can give you a link to. I'll, you 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 guys are all MVPs. You know where the you know where the other roadmap is. Um, but like things like um, your SharePoint Premium, for example, right? There's a whole ton of features and capabilities and experiences coming down the pipeline with SharePoint Premium that we've never shipped before. So. I think this, this whoever asked this question didn't specifically mention what they were looking for, but I think expert, you know, understand the roadmap, <clears throat> understand what what it is you're trying to do, and to other folks' comments, right? Third parties provide solutions. There, there, there's 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 usually a way to solve a problem without just sitting on the shelf and waiting for it, or or investing like a massive amount of money just to make it happen. There, there's so many ways. So many, too many, there's multiple ways to skin skin that cat, as we say, right? Well, this is it. we're going back to you know the first question we addressed the ROI and and figuring right. that out is is you know what are you trying to do that sometimes you know it, 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 what's the value that's what's what's the gap in the functionality what's the value of buying an off the shelf third party solution today until the features come out in the future with Microsoft and then, and then other questions like is, well, if Microsoft with out of the box or with some, you know, minor uh, uh, automation, give me 80% of what I need. Is that, is it enough of a difference for me and a cost difference what I'm already paying for with Microsoft 365 that it doesn't make sense to go and buy that other thing. So what is that value? What is the opportunity cost of not moving forward today with another solution versus you know, waiting for that functionality to be there with Microsoft or going and building that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of those factors. It's just back again to that ROI. Yeah. And once you've defined what you're wanting to do, then you can define what tool makes sense. If you're trying to use Power Apps because you don't like the single column SharePoint form, well, maybe you don't need to go all the way to Power Apps. You can just throw some JSON in the form and and give it a little bit better layout maybe a little bit of extra functionality if you don't like the list view so you're using a share or you're using a power apps gallery to make the list view different again maybe a little json grab a chris kent video change your list view to look like what you want it to look like and you've saved yourself a lot of time and a lot of maintenance and one of the things that hasn't come up um, as we've been talking about this, and Anil mentioned, you know, being able to look at the roadmap and going out there to see, because I always try to recommend to people if it's coming, maybe don't make it yourself. 
Um, what I have noticed is over the last year or so, Microsoft has introduced a lot of customer engagement programs that didn't exist in the past. Um, so if you are a business that is trying to make these decisions before, you know, there was a lot of these for these large enterprise businesses, they are building more and more of those programs for smaller and medium sized businesses. If you are interested in a specific feature set, uh, reach out to a partner or an MVP or somebody that you know that might be affiliated with Microsoft and see if potentially there is a customer engagement program that you could participate in because two things happen. One, you might get the opportunity to use that feature earlier. And second, you can um, provide feedback that can influence what that feature does or how it goes forward, which means that you are going to get more out of it and potentially maybe even get to do that um, for a lot cheaper than it would cost you to build it yourself.